Hello everyone, welcome to video 17 of chapter 3. In this video, we'll go through the third example of linear programming and uh, a special feature or a new feature that will occur in this example is um, the term we call degeneracy. Okay, when this comes, I will talk about it. So, here's the problem. We want to minimize this function subject to this set of constraints. So we see that the constraints are not in standard form. They have a inequality instead of equality, and we still need to put it in canonical form as well. So we use the same um, trick we had in the previous example. We add slack variables for each inequality, x5, x6, x7, one for each of the inequalities. And we know that by introducing these slack variables, we could actually put it in canonical form. So once you've done that, you have the following. You add x5 to the first equation, change into equal sign. At 6 to the second equation, change into equal sign. And at 7 to the third equation, change it into equal sign. And then um, we put the objective function in the as the last equation, z equal to that. Now we see the LP problem is in canonical form with the basic variables x5, x6, x7. The, feasible, uh, the basic solution is feasible, or these numbers are positive, and the z is expressed in terms of the non-basic variables. Okay, so since we have introduced the applet LP assistant, we will put this problem into that, and we will solve it in the applet. Okay, let's look at the details. So here is the output of the applet, and let's talk about it. So the first part, this first block here, is the original problem in canonical form with x5, x6, x7 as the basic variables. Then you have 1, 1, and 1. And I put all the coefficients in, the right-hand side in, and the um, objective function as well. So let's go through the simplex algorithm. First, we look at these coefficients and spot any negative terms, and we see there's one. Okay, then we look at the corresponding column, and we would need to choose a positive term to pivot from. So which one do we choose? We have two choices here, this term and this term. So the choice will be depending on the ratio. So 50 over 1, you get 50, and then you get 100 over 2, you get 50. So they are the same, so you can pick either of them. So let's say we picked 1. So in the LP assistant, you would click on that, that's been circled, and then the LP assistant will carry out the pivoting process, and then you would have the second part of the tableau, okay? And you see that x3 now is entering as a basic variable, replacing x5. Okay. And then um, at this stage, um, we would uh, again check the objective function, these coefficients here, and then we spot a negative one. This is negative four, and therefore we'll be looking at this column. So we see there are two positive coefficients, 3 and the 5, and we need to decide which one to pivot. And then we see that um, 150 over 5, the ratio is 3, and 0 over 3 is 0, so the 0 is the smaller one. So therefore this will be the point we pivot. So we click on that. Okay, and then after you click, and the, the next tableau is displayed. 
the pivot process is being carried out. So you see now x2 is entering as a basic variable, replacing x7. See, you have x2 here. Okay, and then the rest is displayed here. And now we, again, going through the step one again, let's look at all the coefficient in the objective function. We see 14, 1 third, 4 3, 4 3. Nothing is negative here. Then we conclude that we have reached the minimum. The minimum value will be negative 200 is obtained at this um, basic solution where this is x3, this is x6, and this is x2, and the non-basic variables um, x1, x4, x5, and x7, they're all zero. Okay? So, um, so on the surface, um, it went through, and uh, there was no trouble, and we could apply the theorem O to conclude the optimality. But I would like to catch your attention in the step two in the tableau. So we have chosen this one to pivot, where the right-hand side, the B here, is zero. And we know that that's the degenerate case. If this is zero and you p pivot on, on this equation, what will happen will be the change in the z value after the pivoting will be zero, meaning the z value, negative 200, will not decrease, as you see here. Here I have negative 200, here I also have negative 200, meaning that the objective function actually has the same value at this basic solution, with this is x3, this is x6, and this is zero, and at this basic solution, this 15, 150, and 0. So it looks like we are choosing a different set of a variable as the basic solution. But if you write this out, you see that these two are actually the same point. Okay? So you are actually not moving to a different basic solution. So that's the tricky thing about the degeneracy. So however... With the, pres with the presence of the degeneracy, um, our algorithm handled it very well, and we have no problem and no trouble in solving it and then conclude the optimal value, minimum value here. Okay, so let's summarize. Write it out. The solution C minimum is negative 200 attained at that point. And going back to the original problem where x1, x2, x3, x4 are the variable, these are the values, and the other three are the slack variables. And then among the slack variables, the only non-zero term is x6, which was added to the second constraint. So the second constraint is satisfied with a strict inequality, while the other ones are satisfied with equality at the optimal solution. Okay, so would like to comment again that um, the degeneracy here in this example is easily handled by the simplex method. Okay, so um, that's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. The next time we will talk about um, problems that are much more difficult to put in a canonical form and we'll introduce some um, technique of handling that.